Welcome in. What's right? Nick Wright, episode 82, our week six gambling show. And listen, I got to say, typically, Demonze, I'm very excited to do these podcasts. <laughs> um, I have been dreading this one because we are in what is called a gambling rut. Yeah. It's, we haven't had in, every single week has been two and three or three and two. So financially, it's not devastating. However, for four consecutive weeks, our favorite bet, our strongest bet, we have lost. It's even worse because on the TV show, I don't give out five picks. I only give out three picks. (laughs) And I've lost the lock four straight weeks on the TV show because it's the same thing. And this week, I thought I was going to get my vindication because if you remember week two, our lock got screwed in the final seconds. Week three, our lock got screwed in the final seconds. And week four, I believe the same thing happened. I don't even remember what the lock was in week four, but I remember it was covering until it wasn't. Week five, we had Chiefs minus seven. They're down 17, nothing. That is no business covering. And then all of a sudden, the Chiefs score a touchdown to go up seven, and because they're a sharp team, instead of kicking the extra point, they go for two to try to go up two two scores, which made me happy as a Chiefs fan, but very sad as a better because I'm laying the seven. They don't get it, and then they managed to allow a touchdown anyway. I thought we were going to get a good one. We didn't, so I don't know. Are we going to put up our picks from last week? Are we going to show it? I don't even know what my season record is. Oh, sweet Christ. 11 and 14. We're now in the dangerous, dangerous spot where even a four and one week doesn't put us above 500. A four and one week puts us at 500. A five and oh week gets us above 500, but the right move. I'm so tilted on the right move, the lock of the week. Our wonderful executive producer, Kara, texts me. Nick, you didn't send us your lock. I haven't decided on it yet. I'm going to decide <laughs> on it in real time. If we can put those back up just for a moment, uh, if you're watching on YouTube, if not all narrated, if you're listening, we'll go through them. Jacksonville minus seven was flatly a bad bet. There's, there's no bad luck there, just flatly a bad bet. Seattle plus five and a half, feel a little unlucky. Feel like I was on the right side of that. Not only was Seattle covering most of the game, but New Orleans went for two at the very end, down or up five. The stop the two-point conversion, we cover, no-go. Atlanta plus eight and a half went exactly how I told you it would. Atlanta's been a backdoor covering machine. Dallas plus five and a half, they win the game outright. And then we've talked about Kansas City. This week, however, we haven't abandoned the system, but we are going a little more, I don't want to say obvious, but a little more straightforward. This week, we are staring at teams Most of these teams got to win laying less than a field goal or in one case, even getting points. Let's go to the picks for the week. Here is what we like, and we will tell you why. We will start with Cleveland laying less than a field goal, two and a half at home against New England. New England is either starting Bailey Zappi or a feebled Mac Jones. Cleveland is going to do. Cleveland has to win this game. Cleveland probably should be 5 and 0. They definitely should be 4 and 1. Instead, they are an embarrassing 2 and 3 because they keep trusting Jacoby Brissett at the end of these games. I do not believe that is going to happen against New England. Furthermore, New England, yes, they looked very good this past week. To me, that has made them slightly overvalued to where you're telling me the Patriots and the Browns are the equivalent quality of team. They are not. New England has two victories this year. They are arguably over the worst team in each conference. The (laughs) Pittsburgh Steelers and the Detroit Lions. Detroit Lions were a fun story. They're back to being the Lions. They're one and four. Nick Chubb has a big game. The Patriots are incredibly conservative on offense. This is a field goal game. That half point is we're going to get, not only are we going to cover, We're going to cover in the most glorious way possible by just the half point. Cleveland wins this game 20 to 17. 
that's our one and that we start the week one and oh. You how you feel about that? Uh, I mean, it's New England. What does that mean? What does I that feel mean? Like they suck. Oh, I'd bet against them. Okay, but. all right. I didn't know if you meant like it's New England, like you're going against Belichick. You meant no, like no, no, no. it's New England. Now it you're again, not great. one of the weaknesses of doing these shows when we're doing them is that we don't yet know right now exactly who is starting for quarterback for the Patriots. And in an odd way, I like this bet more if Mac Jones is the starter coming off the injury than if the rookie Bailey Zappi is the starter. Either way, Cleveland minus two and a half. Next, okay. we're getting back on the horse. This team's cost us a lot of games this year. Oh. Jacksonville, the prince that was promised, plus a point and a half Again. at Indy. You got a problem with this one? Again. Tell me, what's your issue? Uh, I think he's more of the Wentz that was promised okay. than the Prince that was promised. Okay, good <laughs> line. Is that the joke you were excited about? That was about? my joke. I could not wait to get it out. Uh, um, okay, go yeah, ahead. Dude, Anything just else? Just keep riding that ship. He's done. He's not done. He's failed you week after week. Okay, he's failed me a number of weeks. That is true. <laughs> that is true. However, this is the moment of truth for the Jacksonville Jaguars. He just lost to the Texans. Yeah, and they beat the, the Colts 24 nothing earlier this year. Now, they're getting points in Indy. Jacksonville, the way they have played their last seven quarters of football, they've looked like the worst team in the league. Don't get me wrong. But the way they played their previous nine quarters today, the full game against the Colts, the full game against the Chargers, the first quarter against the Eagles, when they outscored those teams doing the 76 to 10 in those nine quarters has been, was remarkable. Since then, they have been outscored like 35 to 13 by the Eagles and by the miserable Texans, okay? They let the Eagles come all the way back, and then the Texans game was grotesque, and Trevor's yeah. mistakes were awful. I do not believe Trevor Lawrence is going to have Three consecutive awful games. Okay. I still believe in Trevor Lawrence. Also, the Jags must win this football game. Furthermore, the Colts, while I was high on the Colts going into the year, Matt Ryan does look totally officially cooked, and I think they're going to hang around because of their running attack. I don't think the Colts are going to win. Now, I don't love the fact the Colts get the extra rest because they played on Thursday. I don't think they're going to win back-to-back -back games. Right now, the Colts have gone gone tie, loss, beat the Chiefs, loss, beat Denver. So I, I'm getting a point and a half. I think Jacksonville is in a must-win spot. I do not think Trevor Lawrence is going to play three straight bad games. I do think the gambling public is going to be all over the Colts because they don't want to believe in the Jags and because Trevor's played poorly. Jags getting points, must win, better coach, maybe, better quarterback, definitely better defense, I feel, with those young guys. The defense played really well last week. It wasn't their fault they yeah. lost. And another game where a horse uh, This one wasn't a bad call, but it was just infuriating. <laughs> Roughing the passer penalty on a drive-ending play, just like happened. Colts, the, 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 the way the Colts beat the Chiefs, the Texans beat the Jags last week. Drive over, fourth quarter. Tie game situation. The Chiefs were actually ahead. And a third down stop and a roughing the passer penalty. Infuriating. Jags plus a point and a half. We're taking it. Another team in a must-win spot laying less than a field goal. Cincinnati minus two in New Orleans. Now, there is a plethora of road. A plethora. Plethora. Do you know what that word means? I don't. Uh, using my context clues. I'm going to say there is a plethora of road dogs this weekend. So what so do you think it means? There's a body of them. There's a, there's a number of them. A lot of them. Exactly right. Word. That's correct. Bingo. Exactly. That's just how you got to do it. Use the context <laughs> clues. Figure it out. Road dogs this weekend. Ro I'm sorry. Home dogs this weekend. I said it wrong. Okay. I just want to tell you real quick. The following. Uh, Chicago, a dog at home. Pittsburgh, a dog at home. The Saints, a dog at home. The Dolphins. The Giants. The Falcons, the Seahawks, the Chiefs, more on them in a moment. That is eight of our 14 games this weekend that have home dogs, okay? All right. I don't love home dogs of more than a field goal. 
Home dogs of less than a field goal, though, not quite as scary. Cincinnati, after a devastating loss to Baltimore, exactly has to get back on track. New Orleans, on the other hand, flying high after that win against the Seahawks. Right. Now, am I a little worried about Cam Jordan and his ability to get to Joe Burrow? I am. Do I think, however, this is the game Jamar Chase gets on track? I do. Do I think Taysom Hill is once again going to have offensive player of the week type of numbers? I do not. Do I know who's playing quarterback for the Saints? I don't. Jameis might play. It's looking like he will play. Don't care. Jameis has not been markedly better this season than Dalton has been in instead. This is laying two points. I'm essentially just picking a winner. You trust Cincy to get the win on the road. I trust Cincy to get the win on the road. I trust Cincy's got to have this game. They, they had an opportunity against Baltimore. They blew it. They obviously spit up the games at the beginning of the year. That Pittsburgh game is going to haunt them all year. They already have two divisional losses. There's a lot of reasons here. Cincinnati needs to be locked in. Also, one reason to not like Cincy is their coach, Zach Taylor, is not very good. Luckily, he's going up against Dennis Allen, one of the worst coaches in NFL history. This was, I was debating back and forth between putting this in the be careful category and, and putting it in the picks. At the last moment, I said, you know what? I had it in the be careful category. I was like, you know what? No. Cincinnati is winning this game. I'm not laying three and a half, which would make me nervous. Laying two, I'm fine with it. Demonze, I know I said I was dreading this show. Can I tell you <laughs> something? Guy is working himself Can up. I tell you something? <laughs> now that we are three-fifths <laughs> of the way through it, I love all these picks. <laughs> I love them all. Right now, I think we've got three winners already. Put One that of those on might social. Be long. <laughs> yeah, put it on social. This is the week. They, we've had, we've been very mediocre, but we don't run from it. We don't hide from it. We don't do what some of these touts do that are trying to sell you their picks where they're like, oh, in the last seven games, again, no, no, no. We give you our full season, the ups and downs, the ebbs and flows, if right. you will. You know how I feel right now about my picks? Hey. The way Cincinnati feels about this game. <laughs> Season's been a little disappointing. Haven't been quite as good as we th hoped we were. A hair it's under 500. Up. Blew a game last week. This is the week we write the ship. Cincinnati laying the two. All right? I like him so far as well. I won't lie. Next. Pretty good. Home dog getting more than a field goal. The Giants getting five and a half against Baltimore. All right. This is... And outward, listen, I have disrespected the Giants plenty. Don't get me wrong. This is an outwardly disrespectful line. For the Giants to be For who? disrespectful to the Giants. The Giants. At home, getting nearly a touchdown against a Baltimore team that, if we are being honest, has not looked overwhelming in quite some time. Baltimore's very banged up. We know that. Lamar, I thought, played a very shaky game against Cincinnati throwing the ball. Baltimore, they looked unbelievable the first seven quarters of the season. Right. Then the fourth quarter against Miami happened. They beat New England badly, but they let Mac Jones throw for 340 yards. Then they blew the game to Buffalo. They looked great in that first half, then they blew it. They escape against Cincinnati. Do I think Baltimore is going to beat the Giants? Yes. But do I think they're going to beat them by a touchdown plus? I do not. Do I think the Giants are going, this is going to be a very fast game where both teams are just running the ball, running the ball, running the ball? I do. Do I think Daniel Jones might have one big quarterback run in this game? I do. Do I think Saquon is going to get involved in the passing game? I do. Do I think Baltimore, if they get a lead, unlike what they did against Buffalo where they kept throwing the ball, is just going to run the ball and try to get home? I do. Do I like the Giants' defensive front? I do. Getting five and a half points. Again, what does this feel like? This feels like a 24-20 Baltimore game, a 20-17 Baltimore game. Also, the Giants. I think they might be gassed if, up a little bit coming I, off that win from Green Bay. I well, 
I agree with that. Now, I don't love that they, you know, they flew back from London this week and they didn't take the bye. So I don't love that part for them. But on the flip side, Baltimore played on Sunday night. Right. So Baltimore and the Giants probably both got back to their beds around the same time yes, or yesterday, last Sunday. Right. Baltimore after the Sunday night game, the Giants after the London game. I this is a I let me say one other thing because I'm not picking the Giants to win this game outright. But the plus five and a half is too many points. I also think this is a game absolutely where the Giants could be down 10 late in the fourth quarter and get a backdoor cover. They're not they're, the, the Giants seems going to have no quit in them. So for all those reasons, it's too many points in in New York. Baltimore should probably be favored by two and a half or three. The Giants, Saquon's been unbelievable. Daniel Jones have, has been playing clean football. I don't know how long, much longer that's going to last. I, I think Dable's done an excellent job. Giants plus five and a half. And then our final pick. The most insulting line <laughs> in modern NFL history. Patrick Mahomes in his career has played prior to this 41 games in Arrowhead Stadium, dating back to his first year as a starter. Demonte, of those 41, how many do you think he has been favored? 40 of them. 41 of them. Every single game until this week. The Chiefs plus two and a half at home. I, I almost couldn't say it against Buffalo. That's our last bet. Am I guaranteeing a Chiefs win? I am not. Do I think there's a chance that Buffalo could do what they did last year in Arrowhead in the regular season? Whoop the Chiefs by three scores. I do. So why am I betting this? Because you're the next time Mahomes is an underdog at home, you're going to have children. It'll be five years from now. There, this is a once, this is like a lunar eclipse. There's a <laughs> one or solar eclipse, whichever one's rare. Hey, you don't know when this opportunity is going to come around again. Patrick Mahomes in his entire career, fun fact, has been an underdog eight times total, all obviously on the road. Those are, I think, maybe one neutral site, but no, I think they're all on the road. In those eight games, he is 6-2 and two straight up and 7-0-1 oh, and one against the spread. He has never not covered as an underdog. Never. We got him as an underdog two weeks ago against Tampa. And he kicked the shit out of them. Is Buffalo an excellent team? They are. Do they deserve to be the favorites in Arrowhead Stadium? The Chiefs have the better coach. They have the better quarterback. And when it comes to home field advantage, a lot of teams don't have home field. You know who does have home field? The team that made Carl Sheffer's voice crack and, and wanted to go home crying <laughs> midway through the Raider game. I also Can I actually make one small complaint? NFL. This is one of your games of the year. This is the uh, every single television in the country gets this game. It's the CBS 430 game, and CBS has no other four o'clock or 430 game. This will get a the highest rating, maybe, of any non-primetime game all year long, and it'll beat a lot of the primetime games. Maybe don't put one of the two teams on a short week leading into it. Why did the Chiefs play on Monday night before their matchup against the Bills? Oh, I know. The same reason that when the Bills lost to the Chiefs in overtime in the AFC Championship, you changed the f***ing rules. But when the Chiefs lost to the Patriots four years ago in the exact same circumstances, like, oh, should have got to stop. That's fine. I get it. The Bills are the hot new team. The Chiefs catching points at home. That's our fifth bet. So our five bets this week are Cleveland laying two and a half and a must win at home against New England. Jacksonville getting a point and a half and a must win at Indy. Cincinnati laying two and a must win at New Orleans. The Giants getting five and a half against Baltimore. And Kansas City plus two and a half against Buffalo. Oh, do you smell that? What is it? Five and oh. <laughs> Smells like five and oh, my friend. All right. Our stay aways, our be carefuls, and our perfectly priced next. What's right, episode 82. All right, welcome back in. What's right, Nick Wright, episode 82, our week 
six NFL gambling show. We are 11 and 14 on the year. We have lost four straight locks. But I just gave out five of the best bets anyone's ever going to find. That is a four and one week at a minimum to get us back to 500 for the home stretch. And it might be a five and a week. I might. I don't know if it's in there as far as the offer. I might bet all five of these as a parlay at the old 25 to one <laughs> for the five and a week. I might just have to do it. I, I, might, I might just have to do it. All right. He's now we put all the other games into three categories. Stay away, be careful, and perfectly priced. Our stay away games are the following games. Washington at Chicago, Carolina at the Rams, and Minnesota at Miami. Let me explain why each of these are stay away. Washington at Chicago is a pick em. It will have already happened by the time you guys hear it and see this. My logic on this is very straightforward. Washington is right now going through the tumult of Rivera talking trash on Carson Wentz. Chicago, on the other hand, actually played a kind of, no one was watching the Bears-Vikings game, but the Bears had a chance to win it. The Bears played their best game of the year in a loss. I feel like these two teams are, it is, this is the, this is saying Washington's two and a half, three points better than Chicago. I think that's probably right. But also, I put it in this category because if people have already known what happened here, and I'm not that interested in this game. This yeah. is if there's ever a night, America, to have told your wife, oh, honey, I don't need to watch the NFL game tonight. <laughs> it's it's the game that would that happens tonight that you're going to hear about that would have happened yesterday, Washington, Chicago. All right, next, actual stayaways. Carolina at the Rams. The Rams laying 10 and a half. As a general rule of thumb, I like to stay away, Demonze, from teams that just fired their head coach because you don't know the impact that's going to have on them and you don't know the detrimental effect that coach was having on them. All of a sudden, are they going to play their best game? With that said, oh, so there's the unknown quantity. Baker's out, so now they also, the other unknown quantity is new backup quarterback, Madam P.J. Walker. That's a concern. Why am I not then laying the points with the Rams? Because I do think that the we know the Rams have a brutal offensive line. And the one thing the Panthers can do really well is get after the passer. So that, that game scares me a bit. So to me, that's a vintage stay away. So are the Rams a good teaser, you think? Or is it just completely stay away? Well, in a 10-point teaser where it's them just to win, I here's the thing. They're going to be everyone's survivor pick this week. They're at home. It scares me a little bit because of that pass rush and because as far as betting that you can't lay the 10 with them, they haven't beaten anyone by 10 this year. They, you know, they, yeah. Their biggest wins by eight. Atlanta, they had beat by three scores and they almost lost the game. I, I'm not going to put them in a teaser because there is a chance their offensive line is so bad that they get annihilated, that they, the offensive line gets annihilated and they lose the game outright. There also is a chance the Ram, the Panthers' offense is so bad, the Rams beat them 21 to three. I'm just staying away from it. And lastly, Minnesota at Miami. Miami getting three and a half. I am very confused about what's going on with Teddy Bridgewater. And it's a stay away because Miami's on a third string quarterback, but I'm not going to lay three points on the road with Kirk Cousins against the team that are three and a half, that otherwise has a lot of talent. But so Teddy got taken out of the last game because he wobbled, but he has shown no signs of concussion. And they say all week he's shown no sign of concussion, but he's still in the concussion protocol, so he can't practice, okay? But the last thing I read is he's going, they think he's going to be active on game day as the backup quarterback. With okay. the So... He's not practicing, so they're not going to start him. But they think he's going to clear the concussion protocol in time to be able to play. If that's the case, if you're Miami, if the starter, who's your third string guy, starts off terribly, aren't you just going to go to Teddy? And if they go to Teddy, they shouldn't be getting three and a half points. So, But if they go with the third stringer the whole game, then, of course, Minnesota's the side. For all those reasons, questions about the quarterback, it's a stay away. All right, time now. The next category, be careful. This is where we think Vegas is daring you to pick a side, and they almost got me on the first one. 
So it's Tampa, Pittsburgh, San Francisco, and Atlanta, and Denver at the Chargers. All right. Tampa minus eight took all my self-control not to include the picks. It seems too obvious. Pittsburgh has been the worst team in the league this year. Their one game came when the other team turned the ball over five times, missed multiple kicks, had their long snapper injured, all of it, and they still needed overtime to win. Right. Tampa played really well last week for three quarters, and then in the fourth quarter let Atlanta get back into it. But this is a this is a game where you would expect the Tampa defense. Like, how many points do you think the Kenny Pickett and the Pittsburgh offense can score? Ten at most. Can Tampa's defense score? All those reasons. And Tampa laying less than, you know, not even 10, 10 and a half. I feel like this is a game the entire general public is going to be on Tampa. No one's going to be on Pittsburgh. And so it just feels like a trap. It feels like a game that somehow, I don't know if Pittsburgh's defense scores. I don't know if it's that Tampa's offense, special teams has an issue. But Pittsburgh, I don't want to lay more than a touchdown on the road against a Mike Tomlin team. Right. I just don't. But I think the entire general public is. I think everyone's going to be on Tampa. They are certainly going to be a popular survivor leg. And I think they'd be a good survivor leg for whatever it's worth. But I'm it, nobody's going to be betting Pittsburgh. So be careful. I feel similarly about San Francisco at Atlanta. But in a different fashion. Okay. Atlanta has been a covering machine. They are five and zero against the spread. Right. They are now getting more than a field goal at home in a game where last week they just showed you they're going to fight to the end, try to backdoor cover all of it. I think Atlanta is. I think people are going to like. I'm not going to lay more than a field goal with Jimmy Garoppolo, Trent Williams banged up. The Niners just lost a corner. I think this is the rare, rare game where they where the majority of the money is going to be on the underdog because Atlanta has, you know, undefeated against the spread. That ends at some point. With that said, I do think the Niners are going to win this football game. It's a weird spot to me. There's going to be a lot of folks, including Atlanta, on their picks. The people maybe even using a teaser leg on Atlanta to get them teased plus, you know, to plus 11 and a half or plus 12. Uh, 12 and a half is not that valuable, but to tease them through the seven, the eight, and the 10. To me, that's a be careful. And last, be careful, Denver at the Chargers. First of all, it's Monday night. People are going to be chasing. Second of all, Russ has looked terrible. We now know he's injured. It's Nathaniel Hackett. Everyone is going to be on the Chargers. here, And I do think the Chargers are going to win, but are they going to cover the five? Here would be my concerns. That's going to be a Denver home game. Broncos have a national fan base, and they travel well. It's Monday night football. The Chargers have no fans. The Broncos, maybe because Russ is injured, they are now going to do what they should have been doing, which is run the football more. The Chargers are the most injured team in the league. I feel like, Everyone's going to be on the Chargers in this game. I lean Chargers in this game. I'm saying be careful. I don't think anyone's going to be betting Denver. That always is a is a warning sign to me. Is there something you want to ask? You look you like you have a no. inquisitive look. I mean, it's clear you hate the Chargers, but I mean, I see something in here. I don't I hate like the Chargers. I covered it. I listen. I don't hate the Chargers. I think uh, the Chargers were my pick to make the AFC Championship game. They are so incredibly injured. It concerns me. I also think the whole public's going to be on them. All right, lastly, our perfectly priced group. Arizona at Seattle. Seattle getting just under a field goal. Arizona, if this were is, is Arizona minus three and a half, you bet Seattle. At Arizona minus two and a half, you probably want to bet Arizona. You feel like they're going to win. However, Arizona's been, they're the more talented team. And Seattle's defense has been so bad, you feel like Arizona's going to be able to get rolling on offense at some point. Right. To me, this is exactly as it should be. Arizona favored by less than a field goal on the road in Seattle. Go ahead. Even with the way they just performed against the Eagles in a close game, the Eagles are undefeated. No, I, I get that. But I don't think... 
I don't want to trust Cliff Kings. But the reason I say it's perfectly priced is if it were three and a half, I'd be betting Seattle. At two and a half, I think it's I, I think this is a field goal game. It wouldn't shock me if listen, Teddy or Teddy, sorry, Gino's been unbelievable. To me, it's just right. The Jets at the Packers. I know the Jets are three and two. The Packers have not looked good. Green Bay minus seven is exactly where this should be. The, the backdoor cover written all over it. Green Bay's offense hasn't been overwhelming. Green Bay, it's a respect to the Jets that you're only underdogs by a touchdown. Also, will disrespect the Packers. They're also coming off that London thing where they have the shorter week right. to a degree. And then lastly, Dallas at Philly. I listen. We will spend. We will have. We spent more time on this game on Thursday's What's Right show. But I think this is priced exactly right. I think with Cooper Rush as the starting quarterback. Philly is a field goal better than Dallas. You then add the fact, the home field advantage, da- Philly minus six is exactly where this line should be. What's up? What's your question? You don't think it should be higher? I, the Second string I, quarterback, undefeated team. Yeah, the undefeated team doesn't mean that much to me. I think that Dallas's defense is going to do well against Philly. We've also, Philly has been far and away the best first half team in the NFL. And a bad second half team, yeah, you which that. has backdoor cover written all over it. I do think Philly's going to win. I also think Dallas's defense, for the first time all year, is going to have to deal with a mobile quarterback, something they have not had to deal with. So I don't know if the pass rush is going to be quite as dominant as it has been. If you look at the quarterbacks Dallas has gone against, try to do this off the top of my head, they have gone against Tom Brady, totally immobile. Joe Burrow, not mobile. Daniel Jones, a little he runs. I give him credit, but the the, not a good quarterback. And then who else have they beaten? Last week, oh, Matt Stafford. Told, oh, and Carson Wentz. So you, you, Jalen Hurts is the first true mobile quarterback they're up against. I think they'll neutralize the pass rush to a degree. With that said, every single game, Cooper Rush has gotten worse and worse and worse. This past week was his worst game yet. I know the Washington game, the numbers were better, but he threw two picks that were two balls that should have been picked or were picked and was called off due to penalty. I think Philly. Minus less than a touchdown is exactly where it should be. That's about what I expect this game to be. Around a 21-14, 24-17, that to 23-17 to type of game. So I, I think that Philly minus six is exactly right. Okay, what's what? up, buddy? You, you look like you wanted to say something else. No, um, I, I understand your logic there, uh, but no, I'm ready to. You're ready to go to your offers and. Yeah. Discuss the fact that my survivor is done. Oh. And to name check her a second time, our great producer, Kara, text me, Nick, you forgot your survivor pick. No, <laughs> I didn't. I'm just. He cannot participate. I'm not allowed. <laughs> I am ejected from all from survivor competitions. Uh, so we'll do that. See if there's any teasers and parlays. Do all that next. What's right. All right, welcome back in episode 82, final segment, What's Right, Nick Right. First, we got to start off with our uh, lock of the week. And I told you I went into this show. We've lost four locks of the week. It's the right move. We lost four in a row. I went into the show feeling not so confident. And then as I went through those five picks, and the five picks, by the way, were Cleveland minus two and a half, Jacksonville plus point and a half, Cincinnati minus two, Giants plus five and a half, and KC plus two and a half. I got more and more confident. Felt better and better. And when I was like, ah, what am I going to do for the lock of the week, though? Because that's where it's really ruined me on the earth. Missed four in a row. You t- if, if the lock of the weeks were all winners, how about that? Instead of being 11 and 14, I'd be 15 and 10. That's all I need. Uh, DeMonte's like, oh, it's going to be the Chiefs. It's not going to be the Chiefs. Because I think the Bills could win. People are going to say, Nick, you're crazy for this. Lock of the week. Would the prince that was promised ever have three straight bad games? <laughs> Woody? Oh, three wow. straight games you got to win and you lose. What are you Not doing? Not happening. Jacksonville, plus a point and a half, winning outright. And also a delicious teaser leg, by the way, teasing them up to seven and a half. Oh, my goodness. So, Jacksonville plus point and a half. Now on to Survivor. So, here's the deal, America. I try to keep with the integrity of it. Baltimore, I gave you a winner in week one for Survivor. Green Bay, I gave you a winner. Minnesota, I gave you a winner. The Chargers, I gave you a winner. And then last week, we used the Jags, and I gave you a loser. 
However, I was reminded that I am in a survivor contest where I have multiple entries and I am still alive in that one. So here's what I'll do. I will give out last week. This is what we're going to do for Survivor. We're going to stick with the same format of those that we will. We're admitting to the audience. We obviously lost our Survivor entry for the show. However, last week, had we not picked the Jags, the next most popular Survivor leg and the one we had available to us was the Bills. The Bills were 14 point favorites. Call So take the bills off the board for us as if we had picked them last week and I didn't prep the producers on this, but I thought about it in real time. We will continue to give survivors unless we lose again. If you picked the bills last week, what you have available to you and what I would go with this week, which is not a great survivor week. I hate doing, sur- I hate picking teams in this spot. Like I said to you, bad offensive line. New head coach for the Panthers, bad offensive line for the Rams, but the Rams at home is the survivor pick this week. As far as teasers this week, we're not going to give any out. That was part of our downfall last week. Spent a little too much time on the teasers, a little too much time not grinding the tape of these picks. We've got no teasers that I'm going to give out this week. Demonte, do you have anything you'd like to give out before we get to your picks and your offer? Yeah, we've got a little exotic pick. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, this was pretty exotic, but seems like you're on the under, and I'm very curious to know why. Mm-hmm. But mine is over under four and a half years till I have kids. <laughs> well, I didn't say it was on the under. I said about five years. That would be about you know. So there, I think that's. Well, let me ask you this, if I may. Do you think you're ever gonna have kids? I think it's highly likely that I don't. Wow, you think you're an underdog to have kids? Yeah. Wow, that would, that would really break your mom's heart. I mean, it'd just devastate her. Yeah, two more. Yeah, I know. Two more shots. I know. She what? wants to be. She wants to be a grandmother, young as possible. I feel like. Okay, well, that that's a separate thing. Shouldn't have said that on the air. Oh wait, but the, but yeah, I mean, yes, I do think there is an element of your mom that wants to be, you know, hot and out in the club <laughs> right? as a grandmother. Yes, but I don't think she's rushing you to have kids. But you're 24. Yeah. I think you're going to have kids, and I think you're going to have kids before you're 30. I say 28, so I would go under by the thinnest of margins. All right, speaking of Demonze, Demonze last week for my birthday gave me three picks. They went one and two, so thanks for that. <laughs> KC minus seven cost me thousands of dollars. Denver minus three and a half cost me money before we even did the show, and then Arizona <laughs> plus five and a half won. All right, now time. So there's Demonze's picks. His season record's two and four. He's taking the week off. From this week, he'll give us some bets next week. All right, lastly, what's the offer? I and the producer stayed up all night fighting this one. Yeah. I want to go in on this one with you. I okay. call this Nick's Perfect Sunday. Okay. All right, so we got Chiefs to win over 54 and a half and Jags to win mm-hmm. plus 730. Yeah. You say the Chiefs will win and that there's no way that there's there is no the over. There's no way the over doesn't cash. Right. The Prince yeah. always promises Brown to hit his rebound or whatever, which I'm not so sure about. So unless I'm sorry. So unless you're a total hypocrite, we're making the bet right. So the Chiefs have to win. The over and Bills Chiefs has to hit 54. So whenever you're betting a number like that, you got to think like, what's the so 31 28 the over hits. Right. 28 24 it does not. 30 to 24, it does not. But anything more than that, and the Jags win. And it's plus 730. Yep. Jags to win, that's going to happen. Chiefs to win, I hope that happens. And the over. So the over. Hmm. All right, here's the commitment. And DeMonte will keep me honest on this. Ah, it. Yeah, let's do it. We're in. We're in. Let's do are, it. You, are you in for a piece of it? I'm in. You're in for a piece of it. Okay. All right. We'll put 500 bucks on that. Demonte, you can be in for 10%. You're in for 50 bucks. Sweet. All right, let's go. There we go. I'm accepting the offer. Let's go. Perfect weekend. We're going to do that. Over. And what? You think You think we should do the under? No, no, no. It's, yeah. It's... Wait, yes or no? 
You think we should do the under? 54 and a half at the end of the game? Yeah, total. Oh, okay. for the Chiefs Bills, right? Yeah. All right. What? What? What's your... Copy. What's yeah, your no, I'm concern? Just, I'm just making sure. I got screwed doing these over-unders a couple weeks ago. So Yeah, the, the, the problem with betting the over-under is it, De- DeMonte had it and won. He's like, man, if I had just bet the opposite, I'd have won. <laughs> it's like, yeah, that's how these things work. We're in. Over 50, it's a, over 54 and a half. The Chiefs went out right and the Jacks went out right. Plus 730. We love it. Talk to you guys next week. A week seven recap and a little NBA season preview. What's right? Hey, it's Nick Wright. Thank you so much for watching. Please do us a favor. Click subscribe. It helps my ego. And Demonze's got a financial bonus writing on a number of YouTube subscribers. So help him out. And also click the bell. I don't know what the bell does, but they tell me to tell you to click the bell. And your audio listeners, people that have commutes, drives, whatever it is, subscribe to the podcast as well wherever you get the podcast same show just you know just in your ears instead of through your eyes all that check it out appreciate y'all